Oh, that's the way. Well, welcome to the show. It's uh, Neighborhood News, and uh, we've got more Neighborhood News for you coming uh, right here. And uh, we always start uh, with uh, traffic, weather, and sports. Now, still, there's no traffic. The only traffic we're getting nowadays is the snow plows, and boy, they do a hell of a good job. We've got uh, we've got the old guy, the snow plow driver, who knows what he's doing, and then you've got the trainee that comes and uh, is the alternate. And there's a there's a there's a, a huge difference uh, in uh, these two things, and we're going to come back to that. Uh, but uh, the snow plows are doing a great job, and uh, even the young lad there, he's not bad. He, he puts an effort, and but mostly I liked his demeanor. I'm going to tell you about the incident, but. Uh, Snow plows are going, and then of course there's uh, a <clears throat> uh, there's no uh, uh, real sports except for the the dog walkers. The dog walkers out there are doing a hell of a job. They're going around and around and around. The dogs are getting their exercise, that's for sure. Now uh, seems like a lot of these dogs know each other, but I have to tell you, you know, I've been in the dog walking business for a long time. I'm sure all these people are veterans and they know what they're doing. But the truth is, is that I've seen a lot of tension on all of these uh, leashes. You know, what's a, it's a scourge of what today is nowadays where they've got those extended, extended leashes where they've got the long, long slender, and it's a little coil thing. You push a button and it winds back up like a vacuum uh, cord, you know. When they invented those, it was the end of the fucking days, man. That was fucking bad news. That's, that's, that's like part of the fucking world collapsing around us. That was part of it. And letting a dog run out in front of you, just pull, when you got the tension on the line. Almost all of them, they got tension on the line. Very, in fact, it's 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 rare to see nowadays. I have a slack slack line for the walk. Now me, I say that there's no point in walking. No, you know, if the dog is going to take you for a walk, if you got tension on the line, the dog's a boss. You don't go anywhere. That's what. Anyway, there's ways of dealing with that, you know, but people don't want to do that. It's okay. When you get a little small dog, training the dogs like that, it doesn't really make a big difference. You know, myself, I've had a, a regular sized dogs or a medium sized dog, and I've had a couple of large, large, large sized dogs. And my experience is, is that, you know, you, the, the dogs need to know that if, you're, if they can't have them pulling, pulling's not going to help anybody. They can't, they got to learn. And that means, uh, you know, dogs got a lot of things that, you know, dogs are tend to be, uh, they're not big thinkers. You know, dog is all heart. Dog is all heart. They got big hearts. They got hearts bigger than you could. What they have is, it's not so much the physical size of the heart, but what they have is a, a fully realized heart chakra. Okay? So it's fully realized. It's fully flowing, completely opened up. It's ready to go. This is what makes them uh, so beautifully valuable to the humans and to everybody else, too. Dog heart chakra. It's a beautiful vibration. It's goodness. But they're not known for their thinking. They're not big thinkers, you know? They don't. They they can have one or two thoughts in the head. They're running around, and uh, you know there's an echo usually going on. That's okay. You don't need to be smart to be lovable. And they're smart enough. A lot of these dogs. They're plenty smart. Some of them are smart. But uh, you can't give these dogs the idea. You know, like if you find out that the dog is, like you got to learn him. You got to teach him. You got to turn to tell him. Right? And, uh, you know, uh, uh, so what I see is I see a lot of good effort out there. And uh, I see a lot of consistency. I see a lot of, I, I see a, a competitive spirit, you know. But uh, the dog walking, I'm afraid, is not the pro level that you find here in this park. Uh, the level that you find the snow shoveling, which is our other sport. The snow shoveling is at a high level. The dog walking... It's quite competitive, and it's an active sport, but they're not, you know, it's like, it's like when you live out there in the bush, right? A lot of people do. I don't know about you. I live in a, it's like a city. Well, it's not a big city. It's a small city, but a uh, city. A lot of you folks live, and, and so there's things to do, you know, if I, was, if I was allowed to leave the house. Not allowed to leave the house, okay, living in a box. But that's neither here nor there. Imagine, if you will, a day where there was things to do and a city would make a difference. But some people are living out in the bush. You live in the country. And uh, sometimes there's there's not a lot to do, right? And really the big thing to do uh, once a week is to go and watch the high school football game. That's the big thing to do. And, you know, I've lived out there in the bush sometimes, up there in the holler with the lads, right? 
These are guys without electricity making uh, making moonshine. It's awesome. That's a good life. They got chicken farms and other things. And there's nothing to do, right? The only thing to do, the biggest thing to do is you're going to go see the high school football game. Okay. So that's about the level. You know, it's not pro level, but it's still entertaining. You're going to go and you're going to enjoy yourself. Have a hot dog, get a Coke, you know, get a little bit lit up with your lo local lads there. It's fine. So it's the same kind of level here with the dog walking. You know, it's high school level. Still pretty good. You know, somebody, somebody, you know, get make a good play here and there, but, you know. Uh, it's mostly just for a good time. Whereas, you know, I've heard me talk. I've done many shows now. Uh, all season long, we've been we've been keeping up uh, with the details. And that's why, because the level of the snow shoveling uh, competition is very high. These lads are on the fucking job, let me tell you. They're out there fucking first thing. Yeah? They know exactly. They're watching. And they're planning. They're hoping. They're, they know what they're doing. Their fucking machine is all oiled up and gassed up and ready to go. And that's okay, you know, everybody brings their own style to it. You know, you get points for style. And uh, I think that's where I'm going to make, uh, that's where I'm going to make my money here. You know, that's how I'm going to get the points next season. This season, I'm just, of course, uh, uh, technically, it's like an auditing class. You know, you don't get a real grade. You know, I'm going to participate. I'm certainly shoveling along with the rest of them. But I'm not uh, getting points. I'm not on the board. <clears throat> next year, I get on the board. Get on that leaderboard. I want my name going right up to the top of the leaderboard there. And uh, so I'm watching careful, you know, developing my strategies for next year. You know, it's a season game. It's a long game. You know, I mean, you got to pay attention every time. And you're thinking, you know, like, well, this is going to happen 20, 30 times. You want it. To, how's it going to look at the end? So. Or it's a shovel at a time, that's for sure. So they've been doing that. You know, the, the plows are coming and the, 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 the neighbors are out there. They're doing a hell of a job. I did some shoveling. And, uh, you know, I think I did some posts about my strategies on that. But uh, as far as the weather, of course, that was the snow that came down. We got a nice dump. And uh wasn't bad at all. It's like a proper winter, you know. When you have the snow and, uh, you know, where it's reasonable to say, well, I'm not going to fucking do anything today because of the snow. You know. Or all I'm doing today is dealing with that fucking snow because that's the way, you know, that's fine. You gotta have snow to do that, so it's part of the deal. You know, it's 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 uh somewhere in February now, or so to say. That's what they say. Nobody knows. Julian or Gregory or the rest of these guys here calendars. Uh, Skaglier, what's his name? I'm not a hundred percent sure, but he's a chronological guy. He's got to figured it out. It's all a bunch of fucking bullshit, if you ask me. Uh, it doesn't pass the smell test. You get down there and you give it a sniff and you say, hmm, what, what the hell is that? So oh, this, there's no mistake, right? Listen, can't blame me, right? I got a, a fucking disgust response when I smell the bullshit. And you know why? Because it's poison. You can't eat it. And you shouldn't eat it. Oh, man, I tell you what. It's a good thing you can smell. If you can't smell, you need to start practicing. And I would say when you start practicing with the smell is <clears throat> learn how to do the breathing exercises. This is all about the pratyahara. You can learn how to do it. If you can't smell, you can learn how. I would teach you how, but a lot of times I charge people $15 a time. You come and just pay $15 and I'll teach you the business, how to do it, same as everybody else. I don't have time to do it here on the internet. Besides, if you're listening to this, you got bigger problems than fucking can't smell, right? Okay. So. The other things that are happening here in the world, you know, it's just the same old update of like, what is new in the jailhouse, you know? I mean, listen, it's Taco Tuesday every Tuesday, you know. They're going to, they come through with the mops fucking three times a week, right? Uh, you know, what are you, I got a new, I got a new uh, bar of soap. Isn't that nice? You know, listen, I trade my razors. Everybody knows that. I'm not looking for a haircut. Don't fucking touch me. So, you know, uh, we'll see what happens. You know, technically we're getting out of getting paroled, getting out, just kind of walking around. I feel like I'm in the halfway house now to go out a little bit. And you come back in, and it's like, oh, fuck, it's terrible. You know, I'm just waiting for the man to fucking put the hammer back down and throw me back down in the hole. You know, thinking about asking people what time it is when I go piss. I don't like that. Nobody likes that. So, trying to readjust to society. You know, that's the hardest part for any prisoner. It's not going in. It's not staying in. It's getting out. Well, truthfully, the hardest part is the right before you get out. But then the next hardest part 
is right after you get out. You don't know what to fucking do, right? You walk out there, and the fucking sky's still blue, but everything's changed. Oh, the world's moved on. You'd have been left behind there, buddy. And, uh, fuck, oh, God, you tell you what. And you don't, and, you know, and it's like the world is like, uh, they're all like I'm talking on cell phones and uh, driving these fucking uh, robot cars, and God knows what's going on. The music's changed, and everything's different. And, uh, you know, you go to the bar, and it's a whole bunch of different people. You never heard of them. You got a different bartender there that doesn't even know your drink. You can't even have a tab anymore. It's over, right? And that's the cost you pay. It's not just the time. It's that whole life is all gone. You got to start all over again. Where are you going to start? What are you going to do? You got fucking $45 in your pocket. You got four days paid up at the fucking Motel 6. And that's about it. That's about it. So, <clears throat> what do you do? Well, let me tell you. There's a breathing fucking exercise for that, isn't there? Yeah? Don't put your fucking forehead on your knee. That's for sure. And, uh, you know, what we got to do is... You got to do the manifestation process. Do you know what a manifestation process is? Of course you don't. Maybe you do. Maybe that's how I got up on the screen there for you in the first place. Oh, you don't think that's how it works, eh? Well, I'll tell you how it works. It's all vibration now, isn't it? What? What's all vibration? When I say it's all, I mean it's all. All. You, me, the thing, the other thing, and the sky and the fucking planet and everything else is all vibration. Every piece of material there is, uh, is a is a is a manifestation of a vibration that is moving uh, through the universe. Everything is a vibration. It's energy, 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 and it, it takes a material form. Yeah. And uh, that material form, oh, well, it comes up into all different kinds of things. But if you want to turn things, go one. So what I tell you now is it's like starts in the mind, then you turn it into the matter. That's so you create all this stuff with your concentration and your manifestation. It's a visualization that you've got to do. That's a whole bunch of breathing exercises if you know how to do it. Okay. If you don't know how to do it, just let it happen. Right. If you do know how to do it, well, then maybe you can make it happen. But I tell you, let it happen is way better way. You get in tune with things. You get get in harmony, right? You harmonize, right? And then the fucking flow goes through, right? So, a lot of this vibration, you know, but you can use that fucking vibration like a fucking carrier wave. Some of these vibrations. Do you ever go surfing? So it's that kind of thing, right? So you get up and you start singing, and that uh, vibration goes a little ahead of it, and that guy hears that, and you can move ahead. It's a it's a it's a harmonization of the vibration. Through a process of visualization resulting in a manifestation. You understand what I'm talking about? Of course you don't. Now, you know your intention is the way. Your intention is the most important thing. Where does it come from? It's desire. They say <clears throat> that suffering is all due to desire, right? It's the root of all suffering is the desire, right? And that is uh, neither here nor there. I'm here to tell you about the manifestation process, how to turn one thing into another, and uh, that, of course, is the foundation uh, of that process is the desire. Your intention, which means you've got to want it, right? Right? And you want it, and it's going to, uh, uh, that's the first step. That's the first step. I'm not wanting something that's the same thing. Right? Oh, careful with that desire. You don't know what desire is, right? It's not like I want more ice cream. It's more complex than that. Sounds simple enough. All of these things are very complex and they're difficult to do. Of course, the only way to do it is with the fucking breathing exercises. You've got to tune your mind and body together to make it a fine instrument, to make it do exactly what uh, it can do, but you've got to be able to do it when you want to do it. You know, it doesn't do any good to have a fucking beautiful fine instrument. You don't know how to fucking do it. So, that's what we're doing when you get out of prison. You're going to have to recalibrate so that you can regulate, right? And be able to create the new life. Well, what's a new life going to be? Oh, don't worry. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a model citizen now. I've gone completely straight. I've gone legit. I'm going to get a straight job and I'm going to keep my fucking nose on the line. I'm going to walk the line. Staying out of trouble, that's for sure. I'm not hooking up with the old lads. I'm not going to go out there and get on the fucking 
No, no, none of that. No, I'm going to go all straight now. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to get a fucking regular nine to five, find myself a job. Maybe, you know, I envision myself uh, as uh, possibly, uh, uh, you know, I'm hoping to be like assistant manager of the car rental place. Now, not the one at the airport. <clears throat> no, that's too busy. I'm, I've got the one on the outside of town. Yeah. And it's not got the moving stuff. It's just cars. So uh, we don't do the pickup. You've got to come and pick them up and bring them back full of gas over to charge you. Now, that's my job. I sit there eight hours a day. I see two or three or four people a day. And uh, I eat my lunch at my desk. And I get a fucking paycheck, right? And every fucking three months, that bitch manager comes up from the city up the road. And she berates me about how we're not doing the fucking job. And then she goes down to the next one and does the same to the next guy. And I just sit there and do my thing. I pay my rent at my apartment and I just sit there and watch TV all day, right? I'll go to work like that all day and then I'll come home at the end of the night and I'll sit there and I'll watch television. I'll watch like fucking ABC and I don't know, what is it? The, I'll be watching primetime television sitcoms. Well, that, that'll be fine. That's my dream. Of course, to have my credit card all paid off and, you know, have a new car out and a and then have a little I'm trying to get a pool uh, get get a pool permit uh, allowed none of that is what you want to do fuck all of that I don't even know how I got into that story now I'm all lost I don't even know where to go so we'll do a commercial for Schweppes now I normally drink the Canada Dry but <clears throat> I'm getting my tonic water now from a new supplier and uh, on a Canada uh and these are some strange people. I've seen it before. They make friends with you right away. They see you buy something, and the next time you come in, they're like, hey, I got your thing for you because I know you love it. And then you're a fucking hooked customer. I respect that. And uh, when when any kind of a, a shoppy uh, store keep uh, makes that kind of an effort for my business, I respond by giving them my business, right? She makes the effort to learn and to comment and try to make friends and a connection. I say, that's the way to run a business. I like that. <clears throat> you say, oh, Mr. Johnny, I uh, bought your tonic water. I have special tonic water here for you. Always set for you because uh, you're the only one who drinks it. Please come get any time. I order special just for you. So, you know what that means then, right? That means I'm never going anywhere else for my tonic water. I'm going just to her every time. No, it's not the closest store. It is on the way. But it's not the closest store. And I stop there and I get my tonic water and anything else I might possibly need at the time. It's usually one or two items. And I like it. Right? Because someone has made a fucking effort. Now, this has happened several times and it always pays off. Right? These shoppies are fantastic. Until it gets to a place where they start to fight over you. Now, there was one time where I lived at a place and there was a fucking corner store on one corner. And there was a corner store directly across from it on the other side of the corner. And uh, I would go to back and forth. Now, some of them had the one thing and other them didn't have the thing. And this guy's like, oh, no, I can get your thing. Just come over here. And they go, no, no, I'm going to give you the free thing over here. You're just going to stay over here. And it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until one of them shows up at your door with his uh, child, his small child. And he says, please, can you help me with my child? Oh, my God. Oh, it was a terrible encounter. I couldn't understand it. A knock comes at my door. <clears throat> now, mind you. That was not who I am today. This was far back in the past. This was in the big town, big city. It's a massive city, a multicultural city filled with millions of people from all over the world, possibly the most multicultural, as the claim is, most multicultural uh, city in the world. All different kinds of people. And uh, it's a beautiful place to live. I loved it. I was living right in the heart of it, you know. And uh, there were the two corner stores about half a block away. And I, t I have to tell you, I was addicted to convenience at the time. Certainly, I mean, I was fully addicted to convenience. I would go to these corner stores every day. Every day I would be in there. Oh, I'd buy this or I'd buy that. And I'd go and get my thing every day, every single day. And uh, eventually, of course, the battle ensued between the two of them fighting over me. And... Uh, then one day there's a knock on the door and the corner store uh, gentleman there who owned the corner store, it was a Chinese man. With his, with his uh, 12 year old daughter. It's the truth. 
And he says, my well, twelve-year-old daughter uh, is having some trouble in her uh, one of her school classes, and I'm wondering if you might uh, give her a hand. I don't know the language well enough to be able to help her, and uh, I knew that you were a guy who could uh, maybe help her on account of you reading the New York Times and all every Sunday, and uh, maybe uh, I thought you could help her with an assignment that she has. And the poor girl, the look of horror and uh, terror on this girl's face, not terror from me, but embarrassment from her dad, right? And I think to myself at the time, oh my Lord, this is fucking terrible. And uh, so I said, sure, no problem. Uh, I'll be happy to help you. You're uh, my brother. I'll be happy to help you there. Uh, and uh, so I bring her in. Said, What's the assignment there, Lassie? She said, well, it's a thing. I've got to write a review about a, a book report or some kind of shit like that. And I said, okay, don't worry. you got to write, you're going gonna to tell what it is, and then you're going to tell your interpretation, right? So if you're already writing a review of something, always say what you think about it, right? Whether you liked it or not, what the part you liked, what, not what other people think, but what you think, right? And make that very clear in the whole report. Make that the point of the report. That's the review. I said, okay, now you're done. Thanks for drinking the tea. And uh, run off home and tell your father I'll be in for my cigarettes later in the day. Well, of course, this was heartbreaking to me. The embarrassment and uh, the idea uh, that the child was embarrassed and that the, the dad had such fortitude and strength. I was embarrassed to be in the front of such a... Uh, 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 a man who had such strength over himself that he would be able to do such a thing. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it was. It showed me a giant weakness in myself that I would never have the strength to do such a thing, to ask for help like that from a relative stranger. Uh, no, I couldn't do such a thing because I was not evolved enough. I knew that at the time. It was a starting of the weakening of the whole system, <clears throat> of my system of uh, denial that I was in. But I remember it quite clearly. I uh, was embarrassed, and I was—I uh, uh, thought it was shameful, but not him. I thought my reaction that the idea that I was uh, a better man than this man uh, was ridiculous and completely wrong, and uh, I wanted to alleviate that from the girl. I had a feeling that possibly the girl might not quite understand, but. Uh, I understood quite well, yes? But that man was the fucking stronger of the two, that's for sure. No question about it, right? That the strength it takes to have humility, right? And to be able to act, there's, uh, there's nothing, no strength like that anywhere. And even at the time, at my height of my elitism, I knew that, right? So... <clears throat> If uh, you're not careful, you've got to be careful where you buy your things and how much that uh, you get involved with the shopping. These shoppies are types of people that uh, sometimes you've got to be very careful. And uh, I like to not have too many uh, entanglements. And so when somebody buys me a special, they bought the shrimps. They didn't get the Canada Dry. That's what I normally drink, on, only on account of I'm living in Canada. And I think it's kind of a, you know, I don't know why. I don't even know if that's a Canadian company. But Schweppes is what I drink otherwise. As long as it's got the fucking quinine in there, I don't care. That's what I keep the virus away with. How do you keep the virus away? Quinine. Where do you get the quinine? Tonic water. Mm. Now, if you don't believe me, ask any fucking of your Britishers out there. Myself, I'm not a Britisher. I'm a Commonwealther, that's for sure. Currently living in the Great White North. And I've got a heritage of uh, Commonwealthers all the way back. Some of them may or may not be Britishers. I'm not going to comment on my ancestors. That's their own business. Let them comment themselves. Look them up. But, uh, no, I'll say that uh, Schweppes is all right. Uh, Canada Dry is all right. As long as it delivers the quinine. You know, the gin and tonic is uh, a part of uh, keeping the lights on on an empire worldwide. You know, if you don't want the sun to go down, 
then you got to go places where there's a fucking virus. And if you're sending those lads in there, you got to give them a fucking gin and tonic, and that'll keep them fucking safe, yeah? And all the rest of those heathen dogs over there, we'll put them in shape and get them digging holes. We need the gold. That's another story. We don't really need the gold. But that's another story. So, I'm getting tired of fucking yakking now. I'd like to just top in a couple of times. Thought I'd smoke a fucking joint and drink a fucking Canada Dry. Turned out to be Schwitz. And I'm out of weed, so I'm gonna fucking have to switch up another one. Getting out of jail is a, a strange world. You gotta get readjusted. Walk down the street. You'll notice the walk too, a lot of these guys. They got their fucking shoulders out like this and they walk a little like this. Yeah, that, that's what they're doing. That'll wear off. So, do your back bends. And, uh, you don't need to wear your flip flops in the shower anymore. I started going barefoot in the shower and it just about made me cry. But it's nice to be out again. And, uh, who knows? I'm going to make the most of it. You know? Certainly. But it may take me a few days to fucking get up to fucking high speed gear. You know? The world's moving fast now. When I left, when I went in, the world was fucking slow. Now that I come out, it's fucking going fast. I got to catch up. So, I got to learn how to code or frack or something. And, uh, didn't get me a fucking, uh, car loan. You know, get me a big fancy chrome truck. And uh, then I'm going to go rent me out one of them big uh, multi-room mansions. Yeah, they're going to get me a, uh, you know, one of these uh, ladies uh, to come in here. We get a couple of stepkids happening. I'm going to get me a steady job and uh, eventually, you know, have to quit that job. Right? Have it all come back down. But uh, I'll have a good ride while you do it. That's about 10 years. Or I could do something else. God knows what to do. That's the confusion. You know, in prison, you have plans. You say, oh, this, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you get out, and you're kind of like, oh, fuck. That's not really, I don't want to do that. But Disneyland? I don't think so. You know, I spent many a day dreaming at Disneyland. It's like, oh, I'm going to fucking Disneyland. I can't fucking wait. And I'm going down. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to get the apartment. I'm going to fucking go for a month, right? So you rent a place so that you can stay. And then you're going to just go get that fucking pass tour. So you can spend the whole day every day. You just go in the morning. You're going to have a nice lunch when you get there. You spend some time at the pool. Come back in the evening when it's all lit up. It's fucking beautiful. Day after day after day, going to Disneyland. And you go, oh, then you get out and it's like, oh, Christ. I don't think I want to go to Disneyland. You know, like, what the fuck will I want to go to Disneyland for? Like, that's bullshit. So, you know, no, man. I'm going to fucking get a fucking uh, three-hour shift at McDonald's. Probably something like that. And, uh, you know... Eventually, it'll be warm enough, so I'll be able to go out and take the bus somewhere. That'll be nice. Ah, oh, don't worry. That's not going to happen. There's no place to go anyways. And, uh, you know, if things keep going the way they're going, I'm not going to get my COVID shot, and then I won't be able to get my fucking dressing anyways. I'll be having to fucking have my food shipped in, and uh, that'll be that. And so, you know, nobody really knows exactly what happened. Uh, I certainly am not one to know. But uh, ask yourself this. Do you have a nice giant building in the center of your town, like one of those old beautiful buildings and uh, it seems like there's windows all around where the ground comes up halfway up the window? Like there's a, like the first floor is halfway buried? Is it a post office or the psych hospital or the customs house or uh, the, the town hall, the city hall, uh, something like that? One of those old buildings or the original old buildings built back in the day, you know, by the old town founders, you know? And it's kind of bigger than you probably think it needs to be. It's got the big archways and the big fucking doors and uh, maybe a dome, right? And it's just a little shitbird town out there, nowhere, yeah? But the first floor seems to be underground and you say, oh, that's just a basement. That's a little, you know, a little window. But you go down to the basement, you see that those are actually doors and it's like ground all the way up to the, almost to the top of the door. Do you got one of those? Just look around and see if you do, okay? Just look around and see if you do. And if you do, then I'm going to make one exception for you. Now you can comment that in the comments. Just comment about that in the comments and you can let me know. And uh, otherwise, don't bother me with other things. And until next time, you know, be careful out there.